Hi, I'm Jim Johnson. Welcome to the first episode of the Invisible Woods. Uh, on today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make these little whisk brooms from pine needles. We'll go out and collect the pine needles that we need. And if you live in a place where that you can't get the type of pine needles that I'm using for these, which is loblolly pine, it grows, it's pretty much just in the southern United States. There's probably other pine species that will work, but if you just get creative, if you want to do this project and you don't have the right kind of pine needles for this, you might be able to use like this plant, which is sage grass. It's also called broom sedge. And if you take the time and crack the leaves off of these, you can get something like this. And if you're just making like whisk brooms or something, it shouldn't take long to get plenty to do this project. And this grows all over Eastern North America, all the way out to the Midwest and up into Canada. So this stuff is everywhere in the United States. In future videos, I might do a demonstration of how to make make brooms from this broom sedge or sage grass. This is, I've made several of these, and this one is uh, a shaker type broom. And I make these in the idea that this might have been something that the American pioneers, uh, the early colonists might have made and used. And it's just a fun project. This is a 5 eighths pine wooden dowel. Five eighths inches or 15 or 16 millimeters. I'm going to cut it seven and a half inches long, 19 centimeters. The next step is to put a dome on this wooden dowel. So I'll cut one in like this. I take a little bit off all the way around. And then I I come I come up a little bit and go all the way around again and cut a little deeper. Okay, and then I come up a little closer to the top and cut a more shallow angle across the top. And again, I'll go all the way around. And then I'll just go around and clean it up a little bit. Kind of smooth out the high spots and the real sharp edges. So it's pretty rough right now, but it's ready to be sanded. And it's close enough to a dome shape that once it's sanded, it'll look pretty good. If you want a hole 
in the handle of your whisk broom to uh, hang it from. Here's the way I do it. To keep from having tear out when I drill the hole, I take a wooden block and drill a hole the same size as the wooden dowel so that when you push it in here to the end like this, well then it's it's like a jig where that all I have to do is drill straight through the hole that I've pre-drilled the size that I want in my handle and uh, that'll prevent tear out. So that'll look like this. The next step, I need to put a small nail. I'm, I'm going to use this cut tack. Uh, and I need to put this, oh, about an inch or about 25 millimeters from, from the end where the, the broom straw will go on this. And uh, the, this tack is an 11 sixteenths inch or about 17 millimeters and like I said I'm just going to just roughly put it in here about about an inch or about 25 millimeters from the uh, from the end but it's since this is a wooden dowel I have to be careful about the direction of the grain if it was just a stick that I cut off a tree limb or something it wouldn't matter because the grain would be round all the way around it wouldn't matter which direction that I went in it wouldn't matter whether I went in this way or this way. But since this is a wooden dowel, the grain is important because I don't know if you can see this, but the grain is running horizontal. I've got it oriented so the grain is running horizontal to your view there. So if I put it in, in this direction, it would split. It would split the handle. So what I want to do is go through this way to make sure that it kind of pins the grind together instead of splitting it apart. Okay, so as you can see, I'm going to leave the tack head sticking up just a little bit so that when we when we wrap on the the cord to hold the the pine needles in place it'll have something to, to latch together and anchor anchor the uh, the cord and pine needles to Just a simple stick is enough for the handle on these whisk brooms, but you can get a little fancier if you want to and uh, paint, the, uh, paint the handles. Here's a little stand of loblolly pine saplings. Um, that's what I'm going to use to make the whisk broom. Okay, to, to get the pine needles ready, what we want is to make little bundles. And what I'll do is I'll just strip these off, and we we'll want an odd number of bundles. And we we'll want to try to get them all about the same size. Just get them, get a few together like that. And I'm going to want about almost twice that many per bundle. And I'll probably end up using about seven bundles but I'm, I'm gonna get make it just a little bigger add a few more I'll show you how to make one of these bundles that's just about right you get them leveled up together and what I use is is painters masking tape the paper tape What I do, I make three layers. Get 
get them together like this. And I start at the end where I pulled the needles off the branch. And I'm just making a single width of tape across and rolling it, try to keep it fairly tight and stick it together. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add two more pieces that overlap this one in this direction. So this is the end that came off the, the pine limb. And I'm going to have three of these layers. I'll go ahead and show you that. And what you'll want is an odd number of bundles. And like I said, I will probably use seven i mean you could use an even number but it's best because the i'm going to sort of braid these onto the handle and if you use an odd number it just works a little better and this is what allows uh, this is what allows me to braid the bundles braid them on instead of just wrapping them and you don't have to do it this way. I think I showed one of the whisk brooms that I made that was just tied, just tied on more like a regular broom. But you have three layers like this, of the paper tape. And you'll want an odd number, probably seven or nine of these, these bundles. Okay, I've got all my, all my pine needle bundles ready got nine of them. I probably only use seven, but I've got nine ready. And I decided to go ahead and use one of my painted handles for the process because it's no different, but it's already painted and I didn't have the other one painted, so I want to use this one. And uh, so I'm ready to, to make the whisk broom now. So what I did, I've wrapped a strong cord. This is a cord that I normally use in leather working projects for lacing, stitching leather. And I wrapped it around this stick. Get it back so we can see how long it is. And I'm gonna use this for a spindle. Now I'll, I can put my feet on each end and hold it. And so I have some tension against it as I pull to wrap. So I use my feet and I can let it, use my feet and then I can let it pull off as I need it and keep tension on it. And another thing that I'm going to use toward the end of the process is a little loop of the same cord. This this is a strong cord. It's braided, it's flat wax cord. It's this I think is is polyester, but you need a strong whatever you use it needs to be a strong cord, nylon, polyester, something like that. But uh, this this stuff works really well. So, but you also need this little loop, it's a jerk string along with just string wrapped around a stick to use as a spindle for the process. So I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can kind of see my feet so you understand what I'm talking about. Hopefully if you can see this. got it adjusted so I can use my feet on it but as I pull the string it rolls toward my feet so that I can I've got tension against it but I can pull I can roll it off as I need it okay so I've got my stick got my handle and the way I'm going to start is I'm going to orient it so that I'm right handed and I'm going to orient it so that the, the, the straw is on the left side. But to get started, remember I have the, uh, the nail with the head sticking out a little bit and I'm going to wrap around a few times. Well, first of all, <laughs> I'm going to make a loop. Just a little overhand loop. 
and the end of the string. Then we'll go around. I'm going to wrap around a few times on each side of the nail to get it started. Okay, so a couple more things you need before you get started. So you need to make sure you got a pair of scissors and you need a loop with a knot tied in it. Of course, I have all my, my nine bundles, pine needles ready to go. And I've got, I've got a big needle, big blunt needle. Okay, I'm going to reposition this so you can see my hands better. Way, way I'm, I'm going to start with one bundle and I'm going to put it right about where the string wraps. I'm going to slide it under so that the string is right just past, just past the start of the of the tape wrap. You can see that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give it a kind of a tug. And since I started with one, I'm gonna put them on in twos now. Because I wanna I'll be loading an odd number of bundles each time that way. Slide it in here, give it a little tug to snug it in. And I'll get two more. And I'm keeping tension on these bundles. keeping tension on the string. Every time I put a couple of bundles on, I give it a little tug like this to keep it tight. Two more. And it looks like I'm going to be able to use all nine. I've made, I think most of them, maybe the bundles were a little bigger and I was able, only able to get seven bundles. Um, but I guess the bundles are a little smaller on this, so I'm being able to use all, all nine of the bundles this time. Okay, so I got one wrap all the way around and got all of the nine bundles on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap about three times. And each time before I let go with my feet on the spindle, I put my thumb on the cord to hold it in place, roll off some slack, and I'm going to roll around about three or four times maybe even five times, three or four or five times around. And uh, I kind of like the, the look of a wide band 
of cord on the on each end. Okay, now that I've got that done, I'm gonna start braiding it. And the way I do that is I'm gonna lift one of these bundles up like like this. You can see that. And I'm gonna go under under the bundle. Under that one and then over the next one. So it's just a pattern of over and under. So I'll go under this one and over the next. It's just over and under. Just a pattern over over and under each time. And I'm keeping tension on the cord each time and that's why and because of going over and under it that's why it's being braided on to the been braided onto the handle instead of just wrapped so it 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 makes an interesting appearance kind of like looks kind of like a pineapple or something so what I'll do I'll keep this process up until I start running short so I can make several passes here and again I'm just going over and under and keeping the string the cord tight over this and so I'll go under this one well I almost skipped one over this one I go under this one I think it makes it a little tighter on the uh, on the handle when you kind of braid it around this one. So I'm over this one. I'll go under this next one, and I'm a, I'm beginning to get short. So it's I can't go much further until I'm going to have to tie it off. And that'll be the end. I'm gonna try. One more. That's probably about as far as I can go. So I'm gonna give it a, a firm tug right there. And now just like, get this up here so you can see. Just like on this end, with the five passes or so, I'm going to do the same thing about five or six passes on this end. But before I do, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this jerk string. But I'm gonna put I'm gonna make sure that I put the knot to the outside because I'm gonna wrap on top of this jerk string. You'll kind of see the process as I go, but I'm gonna wrap on top of that. And once I get it wrapped, I'll pull the end free under all the wraps. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna wrap it up. And instead of wrapping the cord on top of itself, I'm wrapping it in a parallel I'm wrapping it parallel to itself so that it's a wide band. I'm going to make probably one or two more passes. Okay, that's 
that's good enough right there. So now what I'm going to do, I, I'm holding holding it in place with my thumb, and I'm going to take the scissors, and I'm going to cut it off, but I'm going to leave plenty of slack, and you'll see why. I'm going to cut it off down here. Okay. So I've got plenty of extra slack, and here, here's my jerk string. I'm going to take the, the free end, and I'm going to run through this loop on the jerk string. Okay, I'm going to pull the jerk string through, and this is why it's called a jerk string, because you jerk it through. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little piece of stick and I'm going to wrap it around that trailing end of the string that I just pulled. And I'm going to use it to give it a good tug so it just tightens up under everything. You want to pull it tight but don't want to break the cord either. Okay, that ought, that should be good. So the last thing to do on this step is to trim the string. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my knife and I'm going to I'm going to trim off the ends of these pine needles right here. And I'm going to trim them about close to the end of the tape on the, the upper end right here. I'm using a sharp folding utility knife. It does a good job of cutting through this. Just like that. And it smells really good when you do this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a length of this cord uh, about, a, about a yard, uh, less than a meter. And, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the ends together and fold it in half. Fold it in half so I've got a loop like this. And what I'm going to do, make sure you see this. Okay. I'll take the end loop and form the loop here, and I'm going to put my fingers through it like this, through the loop. Just fold around, bring my fingers together, and it forms a double loop like this. Okay, I'm going to take this double loop and I'll put over the handle down just a little distance down and I'm going to pull it, pull it, pull it tight like this. And I can move it up and down where I want it 
and I'm gonna put I'm gonna thread my needle under these these two ends. So the way I do it here, I've got my needle threaded on and I'm just, I'm going to go just a short distance, short distance through and I'm going from one side, from the bottom to the top and I'm going to pull it through like this until the, the ends come through. I'm going to try to keep the needle on string. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit right there. And I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to start at the same place where it came out. I'm going to go through. I'm going to go under and out the other side just a short distance. And each time Each time I'm going to pull the, the cord tight and re repeat the process all the way around. Okay, I'm back to the starting point now. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to snug it up. And I'm going to take the needle and just go straight straight through the bundle. You could tie it off there if you wanted to, but it looks better, I think, if you just bring it through, snug it up, snug it up, and then trim it off. The next step is to flatten this out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at it and see it's pretty pretty well consistent all the way around so it might have a little more tendency to flatten this way so I'm gonna kind of flatten it out like this because I want it I want the broom to be flat so I'm gonna kind of flatten it out by hand and stitch it that way but the way I'm gonna the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take two popsicle sticks two little craft sticks and I'm going to put pretty far up the end like this, one on each side to help hold it in place while I stitch it to help keep it flat while I stitch it together and I'm going to use clothes pants, wooden clothes pants I'm going to put one on each side And if I do this without bumping it too much, well, that'll, that'll stay in place until I can get it stitched. And once I get one stitch across, one stitch line across with this on there for a clamp, well, then um, I can take it off then. I'm going to set it up the same way as I did the last time with the double loop like that I showed just a minute ago. I'm going to put it on from the handle and same as before I'm going to pull it pull it tight pull that double loop tight and put it just where about where I want it kind of snug it in place there and I'll Put my needle on. And the process is pretty much the same as before. Uh, I'm going to go through one side, but I'm going straight through this time. I'm going over 
and on the other side I'm going to pull that snug I went over over this side I'm going to go under go, go back through come out this side that snug go over I'm just going over and under all the way through and each time I pull it snug I'm going to go back in the opposite direction a couple of stitches. In the way that I, in the direction that I came from. And you could just cut it off there, but I'm going to, I'm going to make a, a loop around and tie it back onto itself. Right at this, right at the end here. I'm just gonna put a double overhand not well a single would probably look better and it should be good enough but I'm going with a double I'm going to trim, trim it off trim it off right there okay see it's flat now and I don't need the clamps on it anymore to flatten it out. Okay, so I added two more stitch lines right here to the uh, to the bottom. So I got one round stitch line and three flat ones. And one of the last things to do here is to just give it a haircut. <laughs> Trim it up even. And I'm just going to take my time and trim it off slowly. And the last thing that I will do to this is give it a coat of shellac. I like to use shellac because it's alcohol based. So it's easy to thin. It's really fast drying. And I will put, put the shellac on all of this part and, and on the top around the pine needles here. And I'll probably give a, a coating over even the painted area here. The handle and this all the way down across this braided part. It's where I'll put the shellac. And it'll turn it dark. Here's one that's already been shellac. It makes, I think it looks a lot better because I used amber shellac and it gives it a little color on, on this one as compared to the white. It's just, I think it looks a little more finished, but there's our completed project right there, short of the shellac, which I will do later.